All right, man. Let's talk about uh let's talk about uh you know uh sorry, I'm throwing a blank here. AJ and Wilder. Um, you know, after we seen what Anthony Joshua did versus Robert Hellenius, uh I think AJ has a path to victory versus Wilder. But a lot of it is predicated on uh, Deontay, the bronze bomb, and Wilder. Um, obviously, uh, Anthony Joshua has the power to compete with uh, Deontay Wilder. I think we all know that. Um, I think some people still believe Joshua can beat Wilder and will beat Wilder. But I think a lot of that has to do with dislike for Wilder. A lot of these dudes out here, you got people accusing like aerosexuals, uh, PBC fanboys for not being objective. And not being real about their fighters, but a lot of them other people who are extremists of other fighters, they can't be they they the same way about their favorite fighters, you know. And they do the same thing once you know Spence lose or once a jostle you lose it was something wrong with them this that and the third. Believe it or not, I think more people in the U.S. as far as boxing fans like Joshua more than Wilder. And like I said, when Wilder lost to Fury that third fight, you see a lot of people. You seen even in the second fight to Fury, you seen a lot of people show a lot of relief, and they was happy that he lost, and they hated on him. When Anthony Joshua lost, they was all it was more it was all about praising him. It was all about oh man, you know, he can come back, he could bounce back. When Wilder lost, it was all oh he should retire, he's done, he's finished, he's finito. You know, it was a bunch of hating ass shit. So, you know, so a lot of these dudes can't separate their they personal feelings from, you know, actual picking and fights. And that's on both sides. That's on both sides. That's on both sides. And everybody know deep down that Wilder going to ice his ass. But the one thing that's killing Wilder right now is inactivity. He got one. He got less than one round of boxing. He got less than one round of boxing. All right. He got less than one round of boxing since he fought uh, Tyson Fury in a rematch, in a trilogy. He got one less than one round of boxing. Let that sink in. He got less than one round of boxing. The inactivity is real, bro. The inactivity is real. The inactivity is real. He got one round of box. So they, they, you know, you can't be 37 years old. And I think he about to be 38 pretty soon if he don't take another fight. So he had one round of boxing. And it it would be in the last two years if he fight Joshua in January and don't take a fight. He got one round of boxing since uh, since after uh, the Fury fight. So you know you got all the rest of twenty twenty one November December, all twenty twenty two he wouldn't fall. So that's a whole year without fighting. That's a whole year without fighting. And he going to be 38, I believe. To me, that just don't. uh, That don't make no sense. And if Anthony Joshua can't beat him coming off a year in inactivity, it ain't nothing really to be said at that point. He need to retire. You know, you know what I'm saying? He need to retire. Let's call it what it is. He need to retire. And that's his method of victory. It's an inactive water. But one thing that's working in his favor, too, if we want to be real, um, one thing that's in his favor is... Uh, is that, you know, we don't know if Deontay Wilder was punch resistance at. We don't know where Deontay Wilder's punch resistance is at. 
Think about that for a minute. We simply don't know. Ever since the Wilder fight, he ain't get touched by Hellenius like that. So AJ might be able to might be able to land that punch, and Wilder may not be able to take it because Wilder ain't been getting Wilder. We don't even know what Wilder punch resistance at after after all of this. We don't even know what his punch resistance at. So inactive, don't know where his punch resistance at. Now he get in there and get some rounds in there with Andy Ruiz. You know what I'm saying? He gets some rounds in there with Andy Ruiz. Oh man, it can get it can get ugly. It can get ugly real quick. You know he get that he get them rounds out out, out, out of you know he get the rounds and then come back and fight AJ and he look good. AJ probably gonna lose. But AJ would rather fight Tyson Fury and get a bag and lose. You get a belt. You probably get a little bit more money. Might be a little bit less, but it'd be a good fight for British boxing history. But Deontay Wilder is the only one that's willing to fight. And this fight could have happened many moons ago for Undisputed. But they let the money get in the way. You know, and they let Tyson Fury get back into the picture. Even if they would have dropped some of the belts, Tyson Fury still would have had to come to see them. Tyson Fury still would have had to come see them. And they let the business of boxing get into the way. And they could say, we made way more money down the line. Hey, this could have been a rematch or a trilogy. UAE buying up everything. You still could have made your money in the future. But they let them talk him out of it. But Anthony Joshua, to be honest, is even more so on the line with Derrick James than he was with Rob McCracken. That's the problem. Derrick James ain't improving his defense. Now, everybody said, well, you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, Errol Spence don't get hit that much. I'm just looking, dude. Y'all just don't know product of matchmaking. Y'all don't. Y'all don't. You know? And matchmaking look, look a lot better than what he was. You know, and when you fight those guys that come in the high guard, they usually just shell up. And you able to work around that guard. If you are accurate and loop around the guard, split the guard, throw combination punches, that's their worst enemy. Look at what Holyfield did to Tyson. And you don't let them get on the front foot and get the leverage that they looking for. You know what I'm saying? So he more he more so on the line for Deontay Wilder with Derrick James than Rob McCracken. But then again, you know, it was gonna be hard. It was going to be hard to find somebody who was gonna teach Joshua defense in two fights before getting there with Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury or getting there with Alexander Usi. And I still think his best chance was with Robert Garcia, but he wanted to challenge Robert Garcia on everything. He didn't want to shut up and listen. And that's what and that's where the problem lied at. And when you got a you got a, a student that just think he know everything or challenge you on everything, how can you teach? How can you get through with them? You can't. So he didn't respect Robert Garcia. And that was probably the best chance for him, the best chance for him. He didn't lose that fight in Usyk rematch because of Robert Garcia. He lost because he want he wanted he want, he he addicted to lifting heavy. He addicted he addicted addictive to coming in heavy. 
he feel like it's some type of muscle ego trip about him coming in heavier. Had he came in about 235, 240, he would have been faster. He'd have had more conditioning, and he probably could have closed the gap on Usyk and possibly got him out of there. That's another thing. He's too muscular. And that's another reason why it's going to be hard for him to get off that line. You know what I'm saying? That's another reason it's going to be hard for him to get off that line. He too muscular. But it is what it is. Um, but, you know, still think he a bad matchup, water bad matchup for him. But, hey, thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and the subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications, increase your chance of new notifications. We go live or drop a video. Um, financially, want to support the channel? Cash out, dollar sign, CJ Good 313. Venmo, CJ Good 313. PayPal link in the description. Hit the link tree. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the whole nine. Hit the link tree. You can find me everywhere. Peace.